The objective of this episode is to demonstrate by a few simple experiments that we measure forces in physics by comparing them to an arbitrary agreed upon unit. In our first experiment, we are going to test the effect of the weight hand on a coil spring on the extension of the spring. We have here a coil spring hanged on our demonstration board. A weight hanger, pointer and a sheet of paper for taking readings. First, we mark the zero point of the spring on the paper. Now we hang a weight of 500 grams. We take the reading. Now we add another weight of 500 gram and in total we have 1000 grams or 1 kilogram. The reading again. We hang another weight of 500 gram and in total we have mounted of our hanger 1500 grams. We take the reading again. Now we mount the last 500 gram weight and in total we have here 2000 gram hanged or 2 kilograms. The results show that equal weight increments stretch the spring equally. Have a closer look. Basically, what we have demonstrated here in this experiment is Hooke's law that states that the extension of a spring is in direct proportion with the load applied to it. Taking account that this linear relationship between weight and length displacement of a spring is limited to the working range of the spring. Two small weights will not stretch the spring at all, whereas two big weights will compromise its flexibility. This could be seen if we look carefully again at our close-up. Here the first increment is a little bit smaller than the next three. We have built in our first experiment a simple weight spring balance. Basically it's working like this commercial spring balance. Okay. Our fabricated spring balance has a scale 
calibrated to 500 gram increments. It's possible to refine the scale by using weights with smaller increments like 250 gram, 100 gram or even less and mark the readings on the scale. But because we have already discovered the principle of the linearity of the springs operation mode and it's clear that the higher the weight applied on the spring the longer the spring is stretched in a continuous way, we can refine the readings by dividing further the scale by calculation alone. We can also use springs with different flexibilities in order to weigh different ranges of weights. Now we can use the apparatus we have built to measure unknown weights between the limits of the working range of the spring. We hang the objects on the hanging hook and mark the respective pointer readings on the ready calibrated paper scale we have created in the former experiment. By this we compare the unknown weight to our known calibrated scale in order to get the unknown object's weight. Now, for example, we are going to weigh this nice old-fashioned iron press. Okay? Our coarse eye reading approximation is something in the middle between 1500 gram to 2000 gram. Something about 1.75 kilogram. Okay? Now, we are going to compare to the reading of the commercial spring balance. This spring is calibrated to 40 gram and the reading is about 1.72 kilogram. Very close to our reading of 1.75 kilogram. Now let's try a digital balance. The reading is 1.76 kilogram. Not bad at all. We are able to measure the weight of an object with a calibrated spring like this or like this because the object is pulled down by the force of earth gravity and as a result the spring is stretched and the pointer points to the weight marked on the scale. Like this, okay? In other words, the weight property of an object is the force applied by gravity on the object. But how can we measure this force? A weight stretches the spring 
higher the weight, longer the spring. A small weight means a small length displacement. Whereas a big weight means a big length displacement. Okay? A certain spring extension means a certain weight, and a certain weight means a certain force. Higher the force, longer the spring. From this, we can conclude that a certain spring extension means also that a certain force is applied. But how can we measure this force? Say, the unknown gravity force applied on a weight of 1 kilogram stretches the spring a certain length. The same unknown force is applied by gravity on any other object that stretches the spring the same length as the 1 kilogram weight does. But how can we quantify this force? Force units do not exist in nature and we can't pick them up. So we have to define or invent units in an arbitrary and a convenient way. In order to do this, the force applied by gravity on a weight of 1 kilogram is defined arbitrarily as 1 kilogram force. So, 1 kilogram force is our basic force unit. Now, we can use our spring scale we have built in the first experiment to measure not only weights, but also forces. Say, an object hand on the spring stretches it twice more than a weight of 1 kilogram does and points to 2 kilograms of weight. The meaning is that the object weighs 2 kilograms and the force applied by gravity is also twice bigger than our basic force unit and it is 2 kilogram force. And if an object weighs 1.5 kilogram, the meaning is that the force applied is 1.5 kilogram force or 1500 gram force. It's clear that the numerical value of force in kilogram force units and the weight in kilogram units are the same by definition. Today we use mainly a more modern and practical force unit than the kilogram force called Newton and its symbol is the capital M. One kilogram force equals 9.81 newtons. On one side of the scale we mark weights in kilogram or gram units and on the opposite identical side of the scale with same zero point and same increments we can mark forces in kilogram force units in short KGF with the same numerical values as weight in kilogram on the opposite side and also newtons by multiplying the kilogram force units by 9.81 but from a practical point of view we multiplied here by 10 so our spring weight balance is also a force meter in the same time take for example our old nice iron press. It weighs, as you see, 1.75 kilograms. On the same time, the force applied on it 
by Earth gravity is 1.75 kg force. The same numerical value or something about 17 newtons. Till now we have measured gravitational forces alone which account for the weight property of bodies. But can we also measure non-gravitational forces as well? We can place our force meter in a horizontal position and stretch the spring by hand, for example. The pointer points now to the force exerted on the spring by our hand and not by gravity. We can also measure the force that holds the spring stretch constantly by this bolt in this way. So it's clear that in the same way we can measure by using our spring scale other forces as well. To sum it up, in this episode we have seen that any physical measurement is achieved by comparison to an agreed upon arbitrary unit, in the case of force to the kilogram force, or more commonly to the newton. The same applies when we measure weights. We did it by comparing to a standard weight of one kilogram found everywhere but take in account that this unit of one kilogram is an agreed upon arbitrary unit also. The weight property of an object is the force applied by gravity on the object. Because the higher the force or weight applied on a spring, the longer the spring stretches, it's possible to measure forces and weights by using a calibrated spring. The kilogram force unit is equal to the magnitude of the force exerted by Earth's gravitational field on one kilogram of weight. This unit is less in use today. The more common force unit in use is the Newton, named after Isaac Newton. One kilogram force equals to 9.81 Newtons.